There is a moment in every great voyage when the journey stops being about where you are and becomes instead about how far you've gone, a point where numbers fail, metaphors crumble and distance transforms into something so immense that only time can describe it. And Voyager 1, a spacecraft built when computers stored kilobytes and engineers wrote code on paper, is about to cross that line. Soon, one single radio whisper from its fading heart will take an entire day to reach Earth. 24 hours, a full rotation of our planet, sunrise to sunrise. And the strange part is not that Voyager 1 is far away. We've known that for decades. It's that it's still alive, still speaking, still pushing through the darkness of interstellar space long after every part of its design lifetime expired. As that moment approaches, something eerie happens to our perspective. Voyager 1 stops feeling like a machine and instead becomes a lone traveler drifting through a region so empty, so cold, so vast that even light, the fastest thing in the universe, needs 86,400 seconds just to say hello. Tonight, we follow Voyager 1 to the edge where time itself becomes the map, and the universe starts whispering back. Voyager 1 is now measuring distance in a way no human artifact ever has, not kilometers, not miles, not astronomical units, but signal time, a metric that only becomes meaningful when a spacecraft has traveled so far that the very fabric of communication must adjust. At more than 23.5 light hours away and drifting deeper into the interstellar medium every second, the probe is closing in on a historic threshold. By late 2026, the round-trip radio delay will exceed 48 hours, meaning engineers must wait two full days just to confirm whether a single command executed successfully. This milestone marks not the end of a journey, but the beginning of a truly cosmic distance scale, the first time a human-made object will sit a full light day from home. And what makes this incredible is that Voyager, launched in 1977 with technology that predates modern computing, has not only survived but continues to accelerate away from the sun at a speed that no future probe has yet surpassed. Voyager 1's escape trajectory didn't happen by accident. It was the byproduct of a once in 176 years alignment that allowed the spacecraft to steal momentum from giant planets like a cosmic slingshot. Decades later, that borrowed velocity still carries it forward, deeper into interstellar space at roughly 17 kilometers per second. But the deeper truth of this milestone is something more humbling. The spacecraft is running on hardware so old it might as well be ancient relics today. Less computing power than a digital watch, tape recorders, transmitters weaker than a car key fob. And yet the deep space network can still hear it, pulling its faint signal out of the cosmic static using mathematical techniques capable of resurrecting whispers from across a billion miles. The fact that a machine this old is about to break a cosmic boundary is a reminder not of technological might, but of human persistence. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause back in 2012, the invisible membrane where the sun's charged particles lose their influence and interstellar plasma takes over. But here's the twist. Crossing that boundary didn't reveal a quiet, peaceful emptiness. Instead, Voyager entered a turbulent region filled with unexpected density fluctuations, strange magnetic field behavior and plasma interactions that puzzled scientists and forced them to rewrite early models of interstellar space. Now, as the spacecraft drifts farther, every fraction of a light hour places it into regions of interstellar medium no human instrument has ever sampled. With each step away from the heliosphere, the spacecraft becomes more like an ambassador entering unexplored territory, not mapping planets or moons anymore, but mapping the structure of the galaxy itself. In astronomy, a light day is rarely used to describe spacecraft. It's a stellar scale, something applied to supernova distances, black hole companions, or the inner orbits of binary stars. Yet Voyager 1 is about to claim this unit as its own. One light day corresponds to roughly 25.9 billion kilometers, far beyond any region where spacecraft have been imagined to operate. And though this milestone is small compared to a light year, it marks a psychological shift. Humanity now has a presence, however faint, stretching far enough into space that even the universe's speed limit becomes slow. Voyager's position will soon blur the line between planetary exploration and interstellar perspective, making the solar system feel like a shrinking island behind it. 
One of the most remarkable aspects of Voyager 1's longevity is that its plasma wave instrument still functions, allowing it to detect vibrations in the interstellar plasma around it. These fluctuations, subtle and delicate, reveal the density of the galactic environment and help map how the heliosphere interacts with the wider galaxy. The fact that a nearly 50-year-old sensor can still hear these faint plasma tones is astonishing. Each detection acts like an echo from a different region of the Milky Way's invisible ocean, giving scientists clues about the structure, turbulence, and density of the interstellar medium that no telescope on Earth could ever obtain directly. Voyager 1's magnetometer is another survivor of deep time, still returning measurements of magnetic field strength and direction in the interstellar medium. These readings are invaluable because they reveal how magnetic fields shape cosmic rays, guide charged particles, and influence the large-scale architecture of our galactic neighborhood. Every tiny fluctuation, every gradual shift, is a piece of a puzzle scientists have been trying to assemble for decades. Voyager provides anchor points that help eliminate models of heliospheric shape that fail to match the data, whether the boundary is comet-like, spherical, or something more crescent-shaped driven by magnetic dynamics. Cosmic rays, high-energy particles accelerated by supernovae and exotic astrophysical processes, behave very differently outside the heliosphere. Inside the Sun's bubble, its magnetic field acts like a shield, filtering out many incoming particles. But Voyager 1 now sits far beyond that protective layer. Its cosmic ray subsystem measures a pure baseline of galactic radiation, offering insights into the dangers future astronauts will face as humanity contemplates deep space missions. This baseline is something no Earth-based detector can replicate, making Voyager's data irreplaceable. Voyager's journey is not just about what it measures, it is about what it endures. Every year, the spacecraft loses electrical power as its plutonium fuel decays, forcing NASA to shut down heaters and instruments one by one. Yet many components continue operating far below their tested temperature limits. Sensors that were never designed to function in deep interstellar cold continue sending clean data. Engineers now treat Voyager as a living laboratory in long-duration spacecraft survival. Its failures and triumphs will shape the designs of next-generation interstellar probes for centuries to come. Once Voyager reaches the one light day milestone, communication becomes a slow, almost philosophical act. If engineers want to rotate the spacecraft, recalibrate an instrument or troubleshoot an anomaly, the sequence will require a full day to arrive and another to confirm the result. This turns even simple operations into multi-day procedures. Mission planning becomes a form of predictive engineering, anticipating errors well before they occur because real-time problem solving is no longer possible. The spacecraft must begin to operate with near autonomy, a preview of the challenges future interstellar missions will face. As the RTGs weaken year after year, NASA must choose which instruments will remain powered and which will fall silent forever. The process feels almost ceremonial, each shutdown marks the end of a scientific capability that has lasted nearly half a century. Yet the team prioritizes instruments that provide insights unavailable anywhere else. Plasma wave measurements, magnetometer readings, and cosmic ray data. The moment the communication system itself becomes unsustainable, the mission will end. Projections suggest the early 2030s may be Voyager's final whisper. Beyond its operational life, Voyager will continue its silent journey toward the direction of Ophiuchus, drifting for millennia before nearing the outer boundary of the Oort cloud. Long after Earth's civilizations have changed, long after the mission team is gone, Voyager will remain intact, a wandering artifact carrying its golden record, a time capsule of human culture waiting to be found or forgotten. While the golden record was originally conceived as a message to potential extraterrestrial civilizations, Voyager's increasing distance has transformed it into something more poetic. It is no longer about communication, it is about legacy. A preserved memory of humanity's curiosity, encoded in a disk that will survive long after the spacecraft stops transmitting. As Voyager drifts deeper into the interstellar sea, the record becomes a physical reminder that human beings once looked up, wondered, and reached outward. 
Voyager's struggle with communication delay, power decay, and instrument longevity forces mission planners to rethink what true interstellar missions will require. Autonomous navigation, intelligent fault detection, and far more durable power systems will be essential for probes that must operate for centuries. Voyager is not just paving the way scientifically. It is outlining the engineering philosophy of humanity's future explorers. Even after crossing the one light day milestone, Voyager remains astonishingly close to home by galactic standards. It will take centuries to reach the inner Oort cloud and tens of millennia to reach its outer layers. This perspective reframes our expectations. Even the fastest probe we have ever launched is only beginning the first millimeter of a cosmic marathon. Voyager teaches us that interstellar space is not just vast, it is incomprehensibly so. Whether found by no one, by future humans, or by something else entirely, Voyager 1 has already become humanity's first interstellar ambassador. It carries a message we may never hear a response to, but its existence proves something profound. Humans were here. We built something that left the solar system and kept going, and that alone is one of our species' greatest achievements. When the radio delay finally reaches 24 hours, the milestone will not arrive with fireworks or fanfare. It will arrive quietly as a timestamp in a tracking log and a whisper across the deep space network. But symbolically, it will be monumental. It marks the moment humanity can finally say it has touched the cosmic scale, that our technology has reached a distance normally reserved for stars, and Voyager will continue drifting farther, carrying with it the echo of who we were at the dawn of the space age. As Voyager drifts closer to the one light day threshold, a new kind of psychological shift begins to spread among the mission team and the wider scientific community, because the idea that a radio transmission now requires nearly a full Earth day to cross the void forces us to confront a scale of distance usually reserved for stars and galaxies, not human-built machines. The deep space network, already operating at the limits of its sensitivity, now must detect a signal so faint it arrives buried beneath layers of cosmic noise, solar remnants, and interstellar static, requiring engineers to extract Voyager's voice like a whisper coming through a hurricane. This transformation in communication time means something deeper. It is no longer possible to think of Voyager as a spacecraft navigating the solar system. It has become something else entirely, a drifting marker of human presence embedded so deeply in the interstellar medium that every new hour of radio delay feels like stepping into a larger universe. The mission team describes the experience as almost surreal. For decades, they have been accustomed to sending a command and hearing a reply within hours, but now every interaction becomes a multi-day ritual, a slow conversation stretched across cosmic distances. It is as if Voyager has transitioned from being a participant in our exploration to becoming a distant storyteller, sending back fragments of a realm that humanity was never meant to reach with 1970s technology. This delay, this simple numerical milestone, is not just an operational challenge. It is a profound reminder that we have extended our reach so far into the galaxy that even light struggles to keep up. With the radio delay approaching 24 hours and the spacecraft entering regions of interstellar space untouched by any previous explorer, Voyager's mission begins to transcend its original purpose, becoming an unintentional prototype for every future probe humanity will send beyond the heliosphere. The document makes this evolution clear. Every challenge Voyager now faces, the weakened RTGs producing ever-dwindling power, the rising communication delays, the necessity for greater autonomy, the harshness of the interstellar medium are the same challenges that will define the next century of deep space exploration. Engineers studying Voyager today are extracting lessons that no simulation could ever provide because the spacecraft is revealing how real hardware behaves after nearly half a century in extreme environments, how electronics degrade under cosmic radiation, how sensors survive far beyond their intended lifetimes, and how a communication architecture stretched over light day distances forces mission design to rely on predictive algorithms and fault-resistant engineering. More profoundly, Voyager's drift into the galaxy becomes a proof of concept for humanity's potential future, a future where probes might someday travel not just light hours or light days, but light years, carrying with them the technological descendants of Voyager's primitive systems. In this sense, Voyager is no longer just a machine, 
It is the first page of a blueprint, a rough sketch of what interstellar exploration will truly require. And as it drifts farther into the void, still speaking, still listening, still teaching, the spacecraft embodies the most unexpected truth of all, that a mission designed before the personal computer existed has become humanity's test bed for reaching the stars. And so we arrive at the moment when Voyager 1, a spacecraft built before the internet, before smartphones, before GPS, before most of the world's current population was even alive, stretches the umbilical cord between Earth and the unknown so thin that light itself begins to hesitate. When that single radio whisper takes 24 hours to cross the void, something extraordinary happens. Voyager stops being just a mission and becomes a boundary marker in human history. It becomes the first artifact we have ever created to operate so far from home that even our fastest signals, traveling at the absolute speed limit of the universe, need an entire Earth day simply to touch it. But what makes this moment truly staggering is not the number itself. It is what the number represents. The fact that a half-century-old machine, running on fading plutonium heat and computers less powerful than a pocket calculator, is still alive, still listening, still measuring the density of the interstellar medium, still sensing magnetic fields threading through the galaxy, still detecting cosmic rays that no other instrument can measure. Voyager has outlived its creators, outlived the world that launched it, and now drifts into a future where it will continue its journey long after humanity itself is unrecognizable. In this final stretch before the one light day milestone, every signal, every voltage reading, every faint plasma echo becomes part of a conversation across time rather than across space. A conversation that humanity cannot conduct in real time anymore. A conversation that demands patience, precision, and humility. Voyager forces us to think beyond the human scale, beyond our sunlit system, beyond the idea that exploration must always be fast, immediate, or convenient. It shows us that true interstellar travel is slow, lonely, methodical, and measured in the lifespans of civilizations rather than the timescales of missions. And yet, even with all the delays, all the fading power, all the technical challenges, Voyager continues to fly, carrying with it the golden record, not as a message to aliens, but as a monument to the one species on Earth that dared to leave home and keep going. When Voyager's signal finally takes 24 hours to arrive, we will not just witness a milestone in astronomy. We will witness proof that humanity, at least once in its history, built something meant not for today, not for tomorrow, but for eternity. And as that whisper arrives across the abyss, one day after it was sent, it will remind us of the truth Voyager has been teaching for nearly 50 years, that the cosmos is unimaginably vast, that our reach is small, but that our desire to explore is limitless.